My name's Colin Ford, and I'm here at Reefapalooza 2016 in Orlando. in biology in which uh, two organisms mutually benefit each other um, by living in close association. So here at Reefapalooza, we've got thousands of people that already are symbiotic with their corals. They are spending thousands of dollars on equipment, uh, on uh, chemicals, on the corals themselves, uh, all in the quest to try and keep their corals happy, to grow as many corals as possible, um, and in the case of, of, of some people, to actually uh, grow enough corals that it becomes a source of income that actually pays for the hobby itself. Um, so this really is a form of symbiosis. I have kind of an informal motto that is, if the corals are, aren't happy, then neither am I. Um, and I think that that can really apply to any coral reef aquarist. Um, you know, if you, have, if you have an aquarium and your corals are sick and not happy, um, it's really difficult to think about anything else besides, you know, trying to improve their situation. Um, and so, you know, in a way, the corals that we're growing in our home aquariums, you know, these corals are taking advantage of us um, and our, our time, our money, and our resources to, um, to sort of spread them around as much as possible. And so, essentially with, with all of the, a lot of the doom and gloom stories that have been coming out about coral reefs, the underlying takeaway message, it seems to me, is that it is the, the ocean itself, between the chemistry of the ocean with CO2 acidification and the increase in um, sea um, temperatures and global warming, um, the ocean itself is really what is becoming a problem for the corals. And so if that's the case, in the future, uh, the aquaculture of corals in aquariums, on land, in laboratories, is, is really important. And the aquarium hobby offers a direct economic incentive, um, both for the humans and the corals, to preserve this biodiversity. Um, and so I love the fact that in the aquarium hobby, there are clones of corals that have been in aquaculture for you know, perhaps two or three decades or more and, and, are, and are literally in tanks all around the world. Um, you know, so from an evolutionary perspective, these are incredibly successful corals. Um, and so one of the, the really interesting things that I, I find about coral and coral science is this unanswered question about what does coral fluorescence serve the coral? What evolutionary purpose do these bright fluorescent colors serve the coral in the wild? And this is a still an unanswered question. But here at a place like Reefapalooza, um, it's very clear that there's a correlation between 
the level of fluorescence in a coral and sort of the, the desire of humans to want to grow it, which directly translates into su supply and demand and, and, and more expensive corals being more fluorescent. But that also ensures that these most fluorescent corals are going to be the ones that are in highest demand, will be aquacultured, and, and in theory they have the potential for infinite life. These are corals that are, are, are clones, um, and so in many cases, these are corals that are you know, being taken care of by, by people all around the world, all around the country, but there's still a wild colony that's out there, and the corals that are being grown in captivity are clones of wild coral. So you know, this is something that, that I think that the aquarium hobby is, uh, you know, is, comes in at a really important time because um, basically we need to have an infrastructure in which it's economically feasible to grow as many corals as possible. And it's quite difficult to do that in, uh, in, in, in sort of a, a scientific or an institutional setting where you need grants um, that are difficult to get. Um, and so it's no surprise that a lot of the advances in coral aquaculture have actually come from the hobby through the trial and error of, of regular people, um, semi-professionals and professionals that are developing the techniques, the equipment, um, and the technology that are then ultimately utilized by scientists um, who are doing their own coral aquaculture research. So the hobby is something that, that should be encouraged. Um, aquaculture is something that, that we should all pursue as much as possible. The future is bright for aquaculture, both with corals and fish. Um, and so I can, I'm only looking forward to uh, sort of the developments that are going to be happening in the, in the, in the years to come. Once again, my name is Colin Ford. I'm a marine biologist and half of Coral Morph Logic, uh, signing off from an excellent Reef of Palooza 2016 in Orlando.